we welcome you to St. Anne, St. Mary Parish, the 12 parish men of the East. We gather today for the feast of St. Bartholomew, apostle and martyr. We begin our Holy Mass with Canticle of the Sun, number 465, Canticle of the Sun. The heavens are telling the glory of God and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the Son, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the wind that blows through the trees, the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze. They blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your it's been an awesome and anointed day. Twelve churches gathering together, men of the East, preparing for the 3,000 men that will join in the Catholic Men's Conference this February. It is a moment of God's mercy, a moment of God blessing each and every one of us. Let us call to mind now the things that we have done wrong in thought, word, and deed, and ask God's pardon, absolution, and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, God in, in the, the highest. highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen in us, O Lord, the faith by which the blessed apostle Bartholomew clung wholeheartedly to your Saint son. St. Michael, and the grant archangel, that through the help of his battle, prayers, your be our church may become for all the nations the sacrament of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We feast on the word of God. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel spoke to me saying, come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. He took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones at its foundation on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your wings, O Lord, glorious splendor of your kingdom. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom, your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendors of your kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Why, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips. May you worthily and well proclaim the Holy Gospel to these good and holy men, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. 
You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, when we started planning this a half a year ago, we were hoping uh, that, you know, some people would come, you know, maybe 12, 24, 40, but to gather 88 of us here is beyond our expectations. And the Lord Jesus has led each and every one of you here uh, for a reason. We are to put on the armor of Christ. We are to allow Christ to take the center, our own ego, to kind of push that to the side. And that's the same in all of our relationships, whether it's with our spouses, whether it's with our friends, uh, so that it is Christ speaking through us. And the apostles that we see, uh, Bartholomew is the feast day today, he was martyred. That's the reason for the red. Red is also used uh, at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down upon uh, the disciples, uh, the apostles, and filled them with a boldness, a courage. Uh, 5,000 instantly uh, went and were evangelized and proclaimed. Each one of us are called to be missionary disciples. We have to know our faith. But it's not just a head trip, it's not a cerebral enterprise, it's also, as we heard, uh, from the heart. And you know, it is only with the heart that one sees rightly what is essential is invisible to the eye. We just uh, celebrated uh, Father David Sizemore and Father um, Billy, um, he was here uh, from Germany, he came all the way uh, to be with us. Uh, and so this was good, they kind of joined us. And I think that as I was in Newark Catholic, I'll be hearing confessions over there uh, Wednesday, um, it's very important for us to realize that as we speak with our hearts, God looks into our hearts. Deacon Dave and I have been going around to enthrone uh, the sacred heart of Jesus, the homes in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And so last night as we went to Mark Ballou, Mark Benzel Ballou's home, it was very touching, very powerful. Uh, sometimes uh, the one before three generations gathered together. And I think that as our diocese is consecrated to the uh, sacred heart of Jesus, we also allow Christ into our hearts. You know, we live in a world that is often filled with uh, lights that are very contrary uh, to the gospel. It is a darkness. Matter of fact, Pope John Paul II calls it a culture of death, and he says that we need to proclaim a gospel of life. There's a lot at stake. Uh, Michael the Archangel will help us to defend us in battle. Uh, but what kind of guys do we have to be? We have to be, first of all, like what we heard in the gospel proclaimed, uh, like Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel in the gospel of John uh, is what the other three synoptic gospels called Bartholomew, so one of the 12 that's always listed. And he died a terrible death. Oh my goodness, you'll hear a little bit of this in the prayer of the faithful, um, but basically they skinned him alive and then cut his head off. And so what you begin to see is that he was uh, allowed uh, to be a martyr for the faith. Each one of us are probably not going to shed our blood, but we're going to witness ultimately to the faith. What was it said about him? Uh, the reading in the translation in the, the new um, missal and, and the lectionary is there's no duplicity in him. The old translation said there was no guile in him. Uh, guile, and sometimes the words that they use in scripture, uh, there's no rapaciousness. Um, basically, uh, we have to look into our hearts, and that's what we started out saying. We have to look into the very depths of our being and say, what is our motivation? Uh, you know, why do we do what we do? Is it because the Spirit of God is leading us or are we trying to get the acclamation or the uh, praise, uh, the, the good wish of everybody, look how wonderful I am. There's a sense that as we gathered here this first uh, of hopefully many um, retreats, uh, we're in the fertile fields. You know, you see uh, we're in the country. Uh, and the farmers are very aware 
that this fertile soil, sometimes we call it humus, is taken from the same root word as uh, humility. We're to have what Mary had, uh, a humility before God. You know, my being proclaims the greatness of the Lord. She didn't exalt herself, but she exalted God. And it's interesting because one of the great theologians, Hans Vers von Balthasar, favorite theologian of John Paul II and also Benedict XVI, um, think of the relationship of Mary. We just celebrated the assumption of Mary into heaven and the queenship of Mary. We just uh, celebrated uh, just yesterday. And so what we see is that she is uh, daughter, okay? She's also spouse, and she's also mother. I mean, think of the relationships that she has, and she teaches us how to pray. We gather here at St. Mary uh, and the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and um, we allow ourselves to be in the presence of God, to listen to the testimonies of one another. You know, um, we are called to be men. We are called, uh, it's a different spirituality, not better or worse, but a different spirituality than a feminine spirituality. And I take my examples from my own dad. Uh, my own grandfathers. Um, I see a tremendous uh, importance of our Catholic faith. Um, my grandfather, my mom's dad, um, he and my grandmother Rosella, Guy and Rosella, prayed the rosary every night together. You know, went to mass, uh, never missed a, a mass, especially on the weekends. Um, daily mass as they grew older. Uh, my dad's dad um, took every Sunday night the family um, was the lead to Eucharistic adoration and benediction. Um, you know, that was just what you did on a Sunday night. It was a family day. And the society is going to erode uh, family. It's going to erode the importance of God. It's going to erode uh, even what it, the genders are, are created. In the book of Genesis, it said God created them male and female. In his own image, he created them. We can see that that was good, and God saw that it was good. We also know uh, my own dad, uh, and I have a great appreciation for uh, Mike Stickle, who's uh, kind of orchestrated this Men of the East. Um, I was off at Notre Dame. Um, my dad had some challenges, midlife. And I'll tell you something, he's going to be 89 on the Feast of the Holy Rosary, uh, but his little secret, our family little secret, is that he uh, had uh, to his mom died and the pressures. He was the top salesman in the world for his company. Uh, tremendous, generous man, good man, but he had uh, that old drink. Uh, and it wasn't whiskey or hard stuff. It was beer. You know, he'd work 7.30 in the morning till 11.30 at night. Whatever the pressures were, uh, Mike Stickle and Donnie Boyce said, you've got a challenge, uh, and took him over uh, to uh, the Franciscan sisters there at St. Anthony's. You know, it's interesting because in all of our journeys and wanderings of life, we end up where we started from and discovered anew as if for the first time. Uh, one of the things about our faith, and most all of you went to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, um, we're not perfect. God calls us to seek holiness, to seek purity, to seek virtue. Uh, but that's where God's grace is beyond uh, our human endeavors. See this baptistry? We didn't have a baptistry. This church is 1856. They laid the bricks uh, right from here. Uh, never had a baptistry. I mean, it was a mission church. And this baptistry was down in a barn on the Morgan Muskingum County border because it was from St. Francis and St. Anthony Hospital, the convent of the Franciscan sisters, and it was being bulldozed over and one of the workers says, oh, my gosh, that's a, that's a holy object. Uh, you know, they found it in the rubble. Uh, there's a few chips off. There was no base. We sent to Italy, got the base. This is the same carved at the time this church was built. Uh, and here it ends up here. It was in a barn being preserved for this holy place. Sister Christina Krauss, who received the Lumen Christi Award, was down at St. Aloysius, Perry County, uh, and they bulldoze, raise that down, and uh, there was an olea sancta. It's uh, beautiful. It uh, looks like a birdhouse, but it's got the holy oils where they contain, and uh, she gave it to us. We didn't have an olea sancta at St. Anne's, uh, so we put it 
original patina right on the wall, and we have those three holy oils. The oil of the sick, the infirmarian, the oil of uh, catechumens, salvation, and the oil of chrism right there. And so sometimes we have a disposable culture. It's like a Dixie cup culture. You know, something's not good, it's defective, just junk it or get something new or get something better. Uh, That's not the way God looks at us. God looks at us the same way that St. Francis of Assisi looked at a, a, a seed, a peach pit, you might say. You know, there's not much to it, but you put that in the ground and you've got the most delicious of fruits as it grows. Uh, God looks at us not where we are, but who we are becoming. And that's why we need each other. You know, the early church had it pretty simple, to be honest with you. Uh, They were all persecuted. They gave their life. They were martyred, like you're seeing today. But they had three things that constituted uh, the faith. The first was, in the Greek, kerygma, means Jesus is Lord. If Jesus is Lord of our life, we don't have to worry about anything else. doesn't mean everything's going to be Pollyanna and fall into place the way we want it, but we've got the strength that we need uh, to know that it's the kingdom uh, that's most important. The second is what we're doing right here today. It's called koinonia, and it means fellowship, communion, sharing. Uh, When we receive Holy Communion, we are receiving the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ Jesus. We become, as St. Augustine said, the body of Christ. And you think about that. And we recognize Christ in one another. So we're not just seeing uh, one another with visible eyes. We're seeing with the heart, eyes of faith. And so the final um, is uh, koinonia, diakonia, koinonia. And the other one is, well, diakonia. It's service, you know, wash one another's feet, uh, you know, kind of take care of one another, uh, look out for one another, just like that beautiful talk. Somebody's got a challenge or an addiction or something, you know, support them. Don't, don't condemn them. Help them through it. Look them in the eye. Look them in the heart. Uh, that's where we are. It's not where we've been, not where we are. It's where God is calling us to be. And that's why this is so uh, beautiful. Uh, this little parish here, 1856. I just wrote, finished the history up uh, this morning early. I, I, we're going to do a pictorial directory and haven't done one for 14 years. So I, I kind of let some people look at it and rewrote it and kind of got that together. Um, but one of the things that we see, don't ever fail to dream. Um, there's a professor, uh, Murray Bodo, up at Kent State. He says, wrote a book, he's a Franciscan, The Journey and the Dream. The folks dream uh, that we needed a bathroom here. You know, this church did not, it had an old outhouse full of termites, two big groundhogs that were like this, no electricity, no running water. We couldn't, our older people couldn't get it. They would be child abuse if you took a child there and fell down because that was all the DNA of all the ancestors at the bottom of that. I mean, that was open. And you think about it. Uh, So we dream. My gosh, we tripled the size of the church and tripled the attendance. Um, just a little dream. We broadcast all over seven continents every time we celebrate Mass here. And people, 55% of the folks that listen to us and watch us are from out of the country. Now think about that. Out of the country. And many of them are in persecuted countries. We've got two new ways beyond conventional that we can get into what we used to call the Iron Curtain countries. People watch us. Bethlehem. We can track who it is. They listen to us. And many of them were tuning in to EWTN, and they started saying, we just want to tune in to, to what you're doing here. Why? We are a slice of Americana. We are out in the country, little country church. We are not ostentatious or opulent. We are humble, close to the earth, close to the soil. It's almost like a Curier and Ives painting or Leslie Cope is our famous painter here, uh, or Norman Rockwell, and it's just good, solid, three, four generations gathering together. The object for us, we have to find a way in this culture, in this world, to spread our Catholic faith. I believe it's solid. It's based on the apostles. It's based on the sacraments. It's based on one holy Catholic and apostolic. Uh, Bishop uh, Robert Brennan's going to join us uh, later on before we leave, 
but he's also going to be here for the 430 Mass. He's been going around all over the diocese. Uh, he is excited as the keynote speaker for the Catholic Men's Conference, along with Luke Fickle, uh, uh, along with uh, you know the folks that we have lined up. It's off the charts. Um, this is what it's all about. So it's up to you folks to go out and invite one person each, and we'll have over 3,000 sure as, sure as shooting. Let's all stand. Lord our God, we come here and we ask your grace and your blessings as we bring our needs to you. We thank you for a very productive and good day, and now we have so much to thank you for. St. Anne, St. Mary Parish from 12 churches representing the Catholic men of the East with our Bishop Robert Brennan to celebrate the feast of St. Bartholomew, who was the son of Ptolemy and is the named in the list of the apostles in all three synoptic gospels. He has traditionally been identified with Nathaniel of John's gospel of whom Jesus said he is a true Israelite. There is no duplicity in him. It is said that after the resurrection, Bartholomew went to India and greater Armenia, where his zealous preaching and command over demons earned him the ire of the pagan priests. The apostle was beaten, flayed, and beheaded under King Astyages. The faithful of Armenia hail Bartholomew as the founder of their church. This afternoon, as we approach the Divine Mercy Hour, we pray for Pope Francis, Bishop Robert here with us, all priests, deacons, and consecrated religious, that we may put on the armor of Christ as missionary disciples and evangelists. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the strength and grace to be witnesses for our Catholic faith and our families, churches, and communities, defending all that is good, holy, and pure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Martyrs are those who, as the book of Revelation reminds us, have come out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They had the grace to confess Jesus until the end, unto death. May God give us grace to put on the armor of Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we proclaim a gospel of life in a culture of death, as Pope St. John the Great reminds us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the justice and mercy of God fill our lives with radiant joy of Christ Jesus, as Pope Francis challenges us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Every month, the 12 churches of men of the East gather, gather to pray, to support one another, to uh, encourage one another. Every month also here, uh, and we rotate between St. Anne and St. Mary, uh, seven churches gather with three deaneries, three deacons, Deacon Bob Galoni, uh, Deacon David Lazowski, Deacon Doug Mould, to also have Eucharistic Adoration, Benediction, uh, Holy Hour, uh, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, Confession. Help us, Lord, to open our hearts so that they are open to your grace and your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This offering that uh, the men will be taking up will be uh, a gift to uh, St. Anne, St. Mary Parish.
we bring forward the gifts of bread and wine and your offerings, we offer ourselves to God. We offer them in a way that they are pleasing, that God will multiply uh, all the goodness uh, because it's his strength, his love, that we receive everything that we are and who we are. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. God, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew the feast day of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the Apostle, in whose honor we bring you this sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy, especially uh, Father Bill Delaney that just came from Germany to be with us, and Father Dave Sizemore. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, remember St. Bartholomew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. On your stay. Mundi, misere brei no hobis. On you stay, quit all this peccat mundi. Don't know bis pachem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ Jesus keep me safe for eternal life. blood of Christ. Amen. Deacon Doug, the body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
may be seated. When I was a kid, I always used to like to listen to Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. Well, the rest of the story, uh, two things I want to share with you uh, today before we uh, dismiss. Um, we're a little ahead of schedule, which is good because there's a surprise. But also, um, my dad um, could have just said, okay, you know, had that, you know, blip in my life and whatever. He went on to be the number one volunteer appointed by the governor in the state of Ohio, the number one service to mankind rotary for the entire world, uh, lifetime honorary achievements by St. Vincent de Paul and Leeds and some of the other organizations, and has continually given uh, of his time, works with battered women, uh, works with uh, juveniles at risk, works with the poor. Um, more than any other person I've ever seen, and I'm with the vicar of Catholic Charities, uh, he has turned that into uh, giving glory to God. Mom and dad uh, are married 67 years, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, I think that's tremendous. So that's, that's number one. Number two, in this church right here, uh, we hosted uh, EWTN, The Journey Home, and one of the guests was uh, a bishop from Pennsylvania. His name was Bishop John Barris. He was here on Monday. He actually con-celebrated. Uh, he wanted to do that. He actually gave the final blessing, which was a triple blessing, which is good. He was moved by the Holy Father to Rockville Center, New York. He worked with Bishop Robert Brennan and said, you are going to love this guy. He's been with us but not in a way that you've seen him. He has watched us during the entire Mass from the St. Francis Abbey Monastery Sanctuary. And so he will hopefully come out and address us. Uh, there he is. Bishop, we love it. Welcome. <laughs> They are elated that you are the keynote speaker uh, at the Catholic Men's Conference, 3,000 people. So if you talk into the microphone, they, they want you to say something to them. So everybody sure. sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to the Men of the East. I'm so glad. I was, I was thrilled by that title. Uh, men of the East, the, 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 the wise men came from the East, right? But they came to encounter the Lord Jesus. And that's what you are doing today. I'm so proud to be here. I'm so proud to be able to be associated with you, even in a small way. Um, I, even though I couldn't be here for much of your day, I wanted to be able to pray at least in one part of it. And so um, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to visit this beautiful part of the diocese. What a great ride I had out here today. Oh, man, oh, man. And you just feel things falling off your shoulder as you're driving east on 70, right? Where you'll live. Sounds pretty good to me, because this is living, I'll tell you. It is. Um, but yes, thank you for encountering Jesus. You know, I, I often say something like this with different prayer groups and whatnot. You're being here today, probably, I'm sure it was a great day for you, but it probably involved some degree of sacrifice. You had, you know, especially a beautiful Saturday afternoon in August, right? Uh, I hope it's not the end of summer yet, but this morning it was a nice, brisk, cool day. This is the kind of day that you feel like getting things done, you feel like doing things, and um, you had already made a commitment and probably moved some things around in order to be able to keep that commitment. And then you came here today. Um, you made that sacrifice. But God is never outdone in generosity, and so hopefully the Lord spoke to your heart in a powerful way. And certainly the fraternity the, that you build up here is a powerful thing. But you see, there's a gift that God gives to you, but it's much more than that. It's much more than that because your being here today is actually a blessing for your families. It's actually a blessing for your parishes. 
And it's actually a blessing for the church, the church as a whole. Because as we are sanctified, as we grow in our grace, as we grow closer in our relationship with Jesus Christ, that radiates. And it has long and far-reaching effects. And so, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you bestowed upon everyone here today. But thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you're bestowing on the whole church through their encounter with Jesus Christ. It's a powerful, the, the encounter with Jesus Christ. And this is, a, this is a Pope Francis theme, but I keep just going over it and over it and over again. Sometimes I fear sounding like a broken record on some of these things, but it's, it's important, it's important. The encounter with Jesus Christ is the most powerful force on this planet. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And your encounter, like I said, goes, it's, it's so much bigger than yourself. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for what it took to get here. Thanks for pouring your heart and soul into it. And thanks for what will bear fruit from it. And by the way, thanks for inviting me. I'm so pleased to be able to uh, spend this time with you. Thank you. Bishop is going to uh, be with us for the 4.30 Mass. I know some of you will be heading out. You're welcome to stay. Uh, I'm going to say the final uh, prayer for the great feast of St. Bartholomew. Uh, Bishop John Barris, he gave a triple blessing when he con celebrated. I can only give a single blessing, so if you will give us I the final that. blessing. Okay, <laughs> let us pray. As we celebrate the feast day of the blessed apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord, and we pray that it may be of help to us, both now and for the life to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn are verse 3 and 4 of Canticle of the Sun, number 465, number 465 in the parish hymnal. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the rain that waters our fields and blesses our crops, so all the earth yields from death unto life. Her mystery revealed springs forth in joy. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field. And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the fire who gives us his light, the warmth of the sun to brighten our night. He dances with joy, his spirit so bright. He sings of you. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, 
and sing, sing to the glory of the 